Okay, so we're gonna start with the removal of the drum brake cover, which should come off pretty easily. Sometimes it doesn't. And then, so this is the inside of your drum brake. We're gonna have to remove these springs so that we can cut away this dust shield to access the back to put on the rear brakes. So I'm gonna remove the springs now. Now we got to remove these four bolts that hold the dust shield onto the rear axle. And then at this point you pretty much want to start cutting. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in through here and then come down through there and make an identical cut on the other side. And that way it'll remove this dust shield and free it from the axle behind it and then you can just pull it off. But thanks to video editing, you won't have to watch all of that. Cut one is done. As you can see, we come in right around here, drop down, and eventually it will cut in at one point so that it is removed. But what you do want to be careful of is the back of this is where your uh, rear axle joins to your hub. So you know you don't really want to cut too far in. So just try to be aware of the depth of your cut and don't overshoot it. Always err on the safe side and double and triple check. And there's the second cut. Okay, so that just about does it for cutting. You can see it came off in a few pieces, but a little bit of a angle grinder magic. This thing finally came loose. Okay, so now that we have the rear drum brakes and dust shields off, we can start by getting the new calipers on for our rear disc brake conversion. Now these won't just bolt on, you have to get some brackets that will allow you to attach the new calipers. These are made by Futofab and they're billet aluminum and they're just going to go on these three bolt holes and allow you to attach the caliper to the axle. I'm going to put it in this orientation, although you can pick which orientation you want. It requires three bolts, which I'm going to use thread lock for. Now first, we're going to have to pull some longer studs through. Because if you zoom up and look at these studs, you can see that a lot of these uh, are just totally rusted out and they're not going to catch a bolt at all. So we're going to tap these studs out and pull through some longer ones. So there are tools that people make where you can push these uh, studs out. And it is a little dangerous to use a hammer because you do run the risk of stripping where the studs get pulled into place. But if you're just pretty careful and tap them out, you shouldn't have any problems. Okay, now we're gonna start by pulling our studs through. And pretty much, uh, as you can see, the studs are threaded, and there's a vertical thread here, which you're gonna pull through this part of the car. And pretty much, you just want to slide them in there and uh, then you're going to use maybe six to eight washers and put those on the nut on the bolt and then uh, use a nut to pull them through and what this is going to do is this is just going to pull back of the stud through the hub 
and uh, obviously this is a moving part, so it's going to be hard to get the appropriate amount of torque required to actually pull that through. So a little trick is uh, as we have these nuts in the back, we can use it as a kind of a brace and put something like this between the, uh, the stud back here. We have a stud back here and a nut over here almost like a kind of a jamming, like a jam nut. And that way it's not going to torque the entire thing and um, give you a lot of negative feedback. I think that one is just about done. And then it's just as easy as doing the reverse. You got your jam bolt. Break this baby loose. And you have successfully pulled one of four studs through. And that's in there now. Okay, so now we got all of our studs pulled through, we got our bracket on, and now it's time to put the rotor on. Now these brakes are from a 1982 to 1983 Nissan 280ZX, but thanks to this caliper bracket, we're able to make the rear disc brake conversion. So you're just going to want to slide these guys on, and uh, it'll just make things easier if you use one bolt just to keep it in place while you're doing the rest of your work. And also just as a tip, uh, these are the, the, the nuts that I pulled the studs through. And you don't want to use these on the actual wheels because, you know, I just put a very large amount of torque on these. And if you mess up any of the threads on these, you really don't want that when you're cruising down the road at high speeds to have a poorly threaded nut. So there's just a few bucks, you know, and just as a safety tip, try to get different nuts for the actual wheel. Now that we have the rotor on, we can uh, put the caliper bracket on and then we will attach the caliper. And again, I'm just going to around 40 foot pounds just by feel. Now we're going to put the brake pads in and try not to touch the insides of the brake pads with your hands. We got one. Now we can put the caliper itself on. And that's just gonna be these two bolts right here. Always check and make sure there's a little bit of grease inside this dust boot, which is what compresses the caliper. So you can see that right there. You want some grease right in there just to prevent any squeaky parts and corrosion. Okay, so now you got the caliper on, you got the pads on, you got the rotor on. Wheel is spinning, caliper's in contact. And uh, that's good for the rear disc brake conversion. And you know, you always get a little bit of a grime and grease or whatever. So always use brake clean before you actually start the rotor going because dirty brakes are bad brakes. And there you have it, rear disc brake conversion on the Datsun 510.